G'day. Got another tip and trick for you. Uh, this one will be pretty specific to people that are setting up ultra-wise, but I think it's a lot easier to do it now in the in the current updates. I've had an ultra-wide Samsung for about oh, 18 months, nearly two years now. Um, it wasn't this easy, so now iRacing sort of supports ultra-wides and stuff like that. But I think when I first got it, yeah, it was a bit of a mess, messing around and trying to get it right, so... All right, I'll try and go through step by step, but I'll put chapters so you can sort of skip through if it doesn't sort of correlate to what you're doing. So in the BDUI, hit the drop down settings and interface and then run graphics config. So that'll be the first thing you're doing. Okay. And then that'll work out the, um, the resolution that you're running and so on. Okay. This will be a quick one. Um, so you'll we'll see what it looks like for me on track. So it's an ultra wide, so I'm running the recording in the center of the screen, so it looks a bit funny, but okay. So it's pretty zoomed in. All right, same options here. Just make sure I'm recording the right bit of the screen, yep. Okay, so we'll go options, graphic. Okay, and then because I run race labs and so on, I've got full screen unchecked, border unchecked. And currently with the NVIDIA GPUs, uh, they've actually enabled reflex. I think you get a little bit of frames, but not much. There's nothing really noticeable, but might as well turn it on if you got it. Um, you always zoom adjust the, like the, how big the scale for the, like the UI is, like the borders around when you're in the pits, you know. Okay, so where are our monitors? So I've got the Samsung CRG90, which is a 49-inch ultra-wide. Yeah, that's the correct monitor width, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and bezel width 4 millimeters and 1800 curvature. Yeah. Before, we used to have to set up as three screens, and it was a bit of a pain in the ass. There was always a bit of a stretch factor. Um, you can still do that, but I've found that this one curve screen setting that they've enabled in IRS in now works pretty good. Um, now with the viewing distance, that's not, my screen's not that close, but I've found the 110 seems to be probably the best looking. I can still, like in some cars, I can still sort of see out the right hand side and it's good for formula cars anyway. So, and that should be it. Once you... Tape measure the outside of the screen. Bezel width is always about four millimeters. And then just to be sure, you're better off Googling, Googling the the model number ultra wide that you actually have. And it should tell you on the manufacturer's website what the curvature is. So it gets rid of a lot of the stretch. So I'll drop a screenshot of what my in car looks like just so you can sort of get a bit of, bit of a look to see how mine looks. But I found yeah, 110 seems to be the best looking. All right, I hope that helps. It's pretty easy nowadays, <laughs> easier than it was before. All right, just a couple more quick ones. Um, in the app config file, there's a couple of things you could probably change up too because when you initially put an ultra wide in, it only shows the border when you're sitting on the track now, like it's showing here. You can't see the rest of my screen, but it only shows like, like it's a three screen. Okay, so it can be a bit of a pain in the ass to set up and so on. Okay, so go into your documents folder on your computer and then go to iRacing. And now with this app file, might be worth just copy pasting it somewhere else just to have a backup just in case you do something wrong or you're not confident doing this sort of stuff. But yeah, it's pretty easy. All right, so when you open this, it should look a bit like this. So this is all the settings and stuff that's in iRacing that also it doesn't have an option in the settings menu. So you've actually got to change it in here. Okay, so I scroll down to, it's in alphabetical order, A for audio, auto chat, cam tool, and so on. So I scroll down to graphics. Graphics here, okay. So one thing, sorry, there's two for the, the UI to show full screen. So it'll be this one here. Let triple header driving UI expand to fill full display. So I change that to one, which means it turns it on. Okay, and then this one here, Session UI, full screen, change that to one as well. 
So it's just, it's just all the same thing, really. It just made it to go full screen for the UI lock for the border when you're sitting out of the car. And then one other thing, <coughs> uh, force visible when move. So when you hit Alt key on the keyboard and you can move your black box and all the on-screen stuff around. So when you change this to one, it's going to bring up everything that's not visible at the time when you hit Alt K to move stuff around. So, okay, force all movable controls to become visible when moving your elements. So change that to one. Okay, so now you'll see when I jump in the car and I hit Alt K on the keyboard, so it brings up all everything. Everything that's not visible at that time when I press the key. So it makes life a lot easier. All right. I hope that's helped a bit. There's a couple of things that people don't really know. Well, we'll have, we're sure it's stuff they want to change, but they don't know how to. All right. I hope it helps. Cheers.